Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I really want to talk about astrology based branding and what it is. And um, I bet we're all feeling the energy of like the first quarter moon phase. Um, first quarter moon phase is all about action. So I think if you've been anything like me, kind of this collective energy of like getting things on the road. And especially because today, the moon, if you're watching this live with me, it's Friday. Hello. Um, say hello um, as you come in so I can know who you are. I can't ever figure out how to see who's, who's watching with me. Um, and it is a Sagittarius moon. And I am a Sagittarius moon. So this is like one of like, no wonder I'm kind of like riding high because this is like a really great, great energy for me. Um, oh, hello, Kat. Thank you. Hi. So glad that you got to join me today as we talk a little bit about what astrology based branding is and how we can really use it to just elevate our business and redirect, right? Like oftentimes in our business, we're like going and throwing spaghetti on the wall, trying trying this thing, trying this strategy, but if we just take a little bit of time, a little bit of insight and explore into our own um, star charted gifts, then we can make really amazing decisions based on our natural strengths, right? All astrology is, is about energy. And if we can work with our energy instead of working against our energy, we can just make our lives so much simpler, right? So today, like I said, I want to talk about exactly what is um, astrology-based branding and what we can use it for. And then I wanted to answer some of your questions. So if you have a struggle that you're working with in your business right now, please share your question or share your struggle. Um, if you don't yet have the insight as to what that question is, because I too have gotten stuck, it's like, well, I don't even know what question to ask because I'm so stuck. And then please just kindly just say, I'm, I'm feeling kind of stuck and then maybe we can open up some questions using today's Sagittarius moon. Sagittarius moon is all about exploring our own truths and like discovering the reason, the how we got to the belief that we have, right? That's, the, I love Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the um, the energy of Sagittarius, um, foot in the mouth and all. Um, so anyway, so yeah, we'll talk about that, answer your questions, and then just want to spend time with you on this lovely Friday. Um, it's I'm in San Francisco, so it's not extremely hot. It's like really the perfect day. So um, Kat, as, as you're thinking about your um, question, just go ahead and put it in the chat. And for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about astrology-based spread. Branding. So, um, so astrology based branding is when we can look to um, the individual person or the um, business's natal chart, right? Um, a natal chart is a map of the stars and the luminaries at the time that either you or your organization took its first breath, right? Now, if you run a business where you are like the, the the face of the business, then I like to look at the natal chart of you specifically so that we can harness your energies as you run the business, as people recognize your face in the business. Now, if you have a business that has more of a culture where you're not exactly the face of the business, but you have a team and everybody in the team has like a really crucial role and there's a bigger culture of the organization more so than just you personally, then that's when I like to look at the natal chart of the business. Now, how can you decide when the business itself took its first breath, right? Like if we're doing our own personal natal chart, at that moment that you took your first breath, like to the minute, we look at your natal chart and it kind of like, it casts all the stars on this beautiful um, clockwork of houses. So not only do we know like the signs and the planets, like all of those archetypal energies, but now we know where um, in your life that these energies are wanting to manifest, right? So when looking at your business and trying to figure out out, excuse me, let me turn my phone off, the ringer off. When you're looking at your business and trying to decide on when it took its first breath, that's going to be individual to everyone, all right? Sometimes it is when you made your first sale, right? Sometimes it can be when you registered your domain name. 
sometimes, you know, people have been sitting on the business, they registered a ton of domain names, but they don't really feel official until they've signed that LLC paper, right? Or they sign the lease to, um, to a brick and mortar um, place if you have like a restaurant or a store, right? So we have to use a little bit of intuition to really determine when we felt like, oh, I, I legitimately have a business now, if that's you. If your business is more of like a culture um, where it's a bigger than just your face as the face of the business, right? So when we look at our natal chart, right? It's all of these energies, each planet represents an energy in our life and each house um, the uh, if you've ever seen a natal chart before it looks like a mandala it looks like a like almost like a clock divided into like 12 little pieces of pie and each of those 12 pieces of pie are called houses and each of those houses um, relate to a specific area in our life right and so when we look at those houses um, we can and how look at what planets or other luminaries are in those houses, we have a better understanding of where energies want to, again, manifest in our lives. And then we look also at the relationships between the planets. And when you study astrology or if you hire an astrologer, and you get deeper into it, you see like, you know, the minutia, like each planet, but then you start to see bigger pictures and bigger themes that kind of um, come up. And so I love to look at this um, natal chart and then a client of mine had called it her treasure map. I just love that idea of calling her natal chart the treasure map of her business because it is, it is a wealth of information. And if we can direct ourselves to, um, to our chart and each chart has a direction, it has like a mid heaven that I kind of like to look at it as like like the north, right? We can calibrate to this compass rose, to this north star of our business and really feel aligned. And then when we feel aligned in our business, we know we can move mountains and overcome any challenges that we have and really drive things forward. So I see that Kat has a question here. And Kat says, I've been working to transition a hobby into a more real legit business for nearly three years. <laughs> Lots of earth in my charts. So I've been taking forever to get it positioned just where I want it. Yes, let we, let's we let talk about that. Um, like what we can look at in our natal charts to kind of give us um, some ideas. So before I get to your answering your question, Cat, because I also had a question earlier from Tamla um, about um, how to convert her um, her offering and like kind of defining her ideal customer. I want to talk about what I look at in um, in an astro brand reading when I'm looking to like direct somebody in their business, right? So first and foremost, what, um, because I have this background as like just like a web does just not just as a web designer and a branding designer, I've worked with like hundreds of women's women and nonprofits over the years, and I've kind of recognized these patterns of how people get stuck. And this is how I kind of came across the astro brand framework. And so when I'm looking looking at um, astro branding, I'm looking at the brand of the business. And when I say brand, I mean the experience that somebody has, whether it's a community member, a customer, or somebody who just found you. What is their experience? What is the feeling that they have when they come into first contact with your business, right? And people can have many different points of entry into your business, right? It could be a face Facebook page, it could be an advertisement, it could be they found your website, which is getting less and less now. It's harder to find things just by like searching on Google and your website is coming up. They normally find you on social media first, or if they've met you in person, or if they've seen an advertisement, right? Those are all touch points, and those all all of those little pieces and components become your brand, right? And so once somebody becomes a customer in your brand, in your business, you're still having many, many touch points where you want to like elevate the experience that somebody has so that they leave with a really amazing and great feeling from working with you. So if you have cust like if you have a service-based business and you want to bring people in 
you know, like it could be just the way that you send thank you notes or the way that you provide your questionnaire for their intake form. And like you, Kat, with your transitioning hobby into a legitimate business, I'm guessing that maybe you offer some kind of beautiful handmade thing. Like how are they finding you? Um, what kind of like amazing um benefits and like special touches do you put into the product that you create that makes it so much more special and so much more valuable? How do you package that up? How do you send it to the person that you want? All of these things are part of your overall brand. So when we look to astrology, probably like the biggest, biggest, biggest challenge. And people are sometimes, I know Tamla totally got it. She's like, well, you know, I'm not sure who my target audience is. And if what they need is not, if what I'm offering is necessary, right? If we don't know who our ideal customer is, then quite frankly, we have no business, right? That is like the foundation, all right, is understanding who your ideal customer is. Now, when you not only understanding who your ideal customer is to get into their hearts and their minds, right? Like, and figuring out exactly what they need. That's one part of it. So going back to like my specific framework, when I'm working with people in my astro branding and, and my program crystallize, I'm looking at three main things to come together. I am looking at the vision of their business, right? Does their business have a clear purpose? right? Their purpose is something like, what is their promise to their ideal customer? What are they hoping to transform in that person's life, right? Their customer's life. Any product, any service that we offer ultimately transforms somebody, right? When I buy these, um, you know, cute glasses and I put them on, they make me feel, you know, funky, okay? <laughs> Right. And I like that. Right. I bought these pair of glasses and it transforms me so that when I go out on the street, I can feel funky. Right. That's that could be a purpose of, you know, like a product. Right. Or even if it's just something beautiful, like I have a gazillion crystals here, I could grab something down. But basically the vision of your business is so important that if we can just spend a little bit of time going deep down inside it of our own selves and seeing what, what is our purpose here? How are we supposed to transform others? How are we supposed to show up as a guide? Whether or not you're selling a product or a service, you are showing up as some kind of guide, some kind of leader that's going to take your customer along a journey, right? And so part of your vision is like, how are you, how do you want to show up? How do you want to be seen? And you get to decide how you want to be seen because if you don't get to decide how you want to be seen, trust me, somebody's going to tell you how you are, like how they think that they see you. And most likely that's not exactly how, what you want, right? So we get to claim and define how we want to be seen. And then also with every guide, you need the person that you're guiding, the hero in your story. And the hero in your story, this is your customer. This is your target audience. This is your ideal customer. So in astrology, when we look at this kind of vision of like our purpose, it's a combination of a lot of different things, right? We look at kind of the midheaven and our sun and then our moon is kind of like the behaviors and the, the places that need to be healed before we can fully show up as we want to. And so, and your kind of your outward appearance of your brand and the guide, that kind of energy that you want to embody, that's all in your rising sign, right? Um, hi, Renee. Hi, Kiati. So good to see you. Um, I can't see who's on here and um, sometimes the it's not telling me. So just say hi. Tell me where you're calling from. And again, if you have any questions or challenges where you're stuck in your business, let me know and I'll give you some insight on how we can clarify some of those things. All right. So going back to the astro branding framework with your rising sign being the main guide as to who you need to be for your ideal customer. Now, there's a polarity between your rising sign, um, the cusp of the first house for those of you who study astrology and your descendant. I think my hands are showing backwards. I don't I, 
I'm putting my left hand for the rising and my right hand for the descendant. Your descendant, descendant, the cusp of your seventh house is the archetype and the, the energetic archetype of your ideal customer, right? So for example, it's no surprise here that I am a Gemini rising, the storyteller, the jester, the knower of a lot of different things, right? And the one who's always collecting information and being the social butterfly and bringing people in. That's the Gemini archetype. And I best serve people who have the Sagittarius archetype, right? So if you think of the people who have the Sagittarius archetype, it doesn't mean that they have to be a Sagittarius. All it means is that the person who I best serve embodies the energy of the Sagittarius person. The Sagittarius person is like the explorer, the optimist, the believer, the dreamer, um, you know, the one who's always searching for the higher truth, whether they um, travel far distances or whether they, you know, are a lifelong learner and continually taking classes. They're also the teacher. They also love, you know, a little bit of like, um, of, not religion, so to say, but like, and not really law and order, but just like this idea of ever expanding and never growing, right? Those are the people that have the, like, and they're looking for their truth. Those are the people that I ideally love to serve. Oh, Robin, you're in South Carolina. Oh my gosh, I was just in South Carolina. I wish um, I had seen you. I had called you up and known that you were there. Um, hi, Tom, I have your question and we're going to be talking. That's what we're talking about right now, our target market. So if you know your rising sign, can you please put it in the comments? Because I'd love to kind of give you some um, insight on how you can use that rising sign to really pinpoint who your ideal customer is, your, your um, target market. So the idea between the first house and the seventh house is that you have this um, this polarity, right? And the polarity is about um, magnetizing, right? Like in a battery, positive and negative. Um, so so cat rising in Taurus. So the opposite of Taurus, the Taurus is in the second house. Uh, so before so Scorpio, yeah. So so. So Kat, your ideal customers embody the Scorpio archetype, right? The Scorpio archetype is about, um, it's about, uh, how do I want to say it? Like sometimes like Scorpio, like they get a bad rap. They like to keep, you know, they're very strategic. They're very, um, they go deep, right? They want to know everything about a like about one subject, right? They want to know, um, they want to hide from shame a little bit. They, they deal with this. If Taurus is about pleasure, Scorpio can be about pain, right? Like thinking about the, that kind of like um, polarity. So with this, when you're dealing with a Scorpio person, you're looking for a deep emotional connection. So you're looking to be the guy that is going to be able to give pleasure, right, as the Taurus. So like if you're creating something, the Taurus um, product needs to be luxurious. It needs to be pleasurable so that you can really talk to an emotional connect with your Scorpio polarity and with Robin you're Leo and so with Leo that's great because your your ideal customer is Aquarius right so as Leo you have to show up as creative and exuberant and this performer and but regal and um, playful and then your Aquarius customers they're looking for something innovative they're looking for something out of the ordinary and totally original so do you see how these two polarities balance, right? And so that's a huge part of like the vision of your business. And when you have all of these things all aligned to your astrological chart, you can see how that you're like, I who here is like, ah, oh, aha, that totally makes sense. Um, and to me, I, I just love that kind of um, mapping out for our brand. So the other part of um, the Astro Branding Framework is like now that we have our vision, which again, it's a combination of, of different things that we look at, like sun, moon, rising, descendant. And I'm putting together, I mentioned a new freebie called the Four Directions, um, which is really going to outline the polarities for the um, 
the horizon line, the ascendant and descendant, but also looking at the meridian, the polarity between your midheaven, how you're supposed to be, um, how you would desire to be seen in the world and, and in public, and then your descendant, what you need to work through and um, heal in yourself in order to show up the most full. So that's going to be this freebie that is coming up so soon um, called the four directions for your brand. So how you can calibrate your brand to your own natal chart. Um, so the next part of the Astro Brand Framework when you work with me is about your voice. Right. And we all have different voices and this voice, you know, it can be a lot just from our personality. But when we have a clear vision of who, how we need to show up, who we want to be, who we serve, that gives us a lot of information in order to be able to create the voice of our brand. The, that's the personality of our brand, but then also the messaging. So Tamla, this is for you, right? So, well, this is for everybody really, but Tamla, this kind of pertains to your question. When you know who your ideal customer is, it's our job to understand what they really want, where their struggles are, where their pain points are, right? What they're dealing with that your product or offering can solve. And if you don't know those things, if you don't know who your ideal customer is, and if you don't know what their problem, Thomas says, if you're, okay, so if your ascendant is in Aries, then your, um, your descendant is in Libra, right? So Aries, like you're supposed to stand, you need to be this kind of leader. And Aries needs to be a leader fully embodied in their own power and their own motivation and their own ability to show up as 100% themselves. Aries is all about the self. And then Libra, the opposite of that, the polarity of that is about making connections and relationships. Like that's the that's the perfect um, idea of the rising and the descendant is the Aries Libra polarity because with Libra, they are magnetized, right? They want to connect and they want to make relationships and they want to connect to those Aries people, those people that are so self-confident, those leaders in the world, right? I love that polarity between um, the Aries and, and Libra. So Tamla, when you're looking at your ideal customer, they embody the Libra archetype. You know, Libras, all those things that you hear about Libras, right? They're loving and they're romantic and they want to make connections and they're, they want to be popular and they want social justice in the world they're always trying to bring balance into the world they can be a little bit of people pleasers um, or Aries are not people pleasers right and that's part of the that's the magnetism between the Libra and um, and the Aries is because Libra wants to please so much, but they kind of, they're, they're like, how does the Aries person stand up and be their own? So you see how they can teach each other things, right? So when you think about your customer as the Libra and you're saying, I have your question right here, um, what do they need? What does that Libra audience of yours need? Of your offering so share I would love to hear um, oh hi Karen oh thank you <laughs> I've been working on my live vibes <laughs> um, so Tamla you know any of you guys share with me please some of your questions about your offering and how we can maybe like target it more to your ideal customer right so going back to the framework Vision is the like the one of three. Then we have the voice. And you can see that we can't create our messaging until we're super clear on our vision, right? And our voice and our messaging is directly related to our ideal customer. We're speaking to the hearts of our ideal customer. We're letting them know that we understand what they're going through. We know what they need and that they can trust us to help them, that we have been there before and that we can help them through the same thing, right? That's that's part of like our voice and our messaging. And how do we define that voice? Well, we need to know our vision first. So the third part of the Astro Brown framework is now packaging it all together into this beautiful style, right? So you've probably heard me say this before. It's like most of like my web design and my branding design clients, they come to me like maybe at the beginning part of their business and they're like, I need a website. It's like, yeah, you do. So what, who's your ideal customer? What do you need to do? And they don't know any of that. And I'm like, ah, 
Okay, let's let's take a couple of steps back because ideally your website, your logo, you know, your advertising, your welcome sequence in your email, your freebies, your um, your brochures, your postcards, you know, if you have a product, your packaging, um, your thank you notes, your gifts that you send to delight your customers, all of those things are, I, I like to categorize them in the style part of the framework. Right. And so and oftentimes we like to think about that first because it's the most fun. Right. You've got we're working with colors and fonts and beautiful things and we all get caught up in those things. But we can't really create a style for our business until we know the message. Right. The style has to support the message and the style has to support the vision of your business. Right. And when, you know, earlier I was talking about the style and our the experience that we have with our brand. The style is, you know, the systems that you have in place, right? How easy is it to work with somebody? How easy is it to buy with somebody? Well, all of those things, customer service, the emails that you send, all of those things are the touch points that all together create the style of your business. So if we determine that, you know, your like your business is um, so for me, like I'll I'll use my business as an example with my Gemini rising and my Sagittarius descendant. Like I said earlier, my Gemini rising, the guide that I need to be is one that knows a lot about a different a lot of different things, one that communicates and shares everything that she knows to my Sagittarius customers who are looking for their own inner truth. They are the, the, the wanderlust people, the ones that love exploring and lifelong learning, right? So when I combine those two, the theme of my business actually becomes like exploration. So it's no wonder I call myself the brand navigator, right? Because I help people navigate and orient their brands to their direction so like i'm like the uh, if you have anybody here watch moana oh my gosh i freaking love moana <laughs> and in moana um my you know my son loves moana too he's three and a half years old so we've probably watched it you know like just about 40 times or something um <laughs> but in moana um he loves to play maui and you know you know take washing his hair we was like let's make your hair like silky and smooth like maui and um but when we play moana i like to be grandmatala <laughs> I freaking love Grandma Tala. I just love how she is like no nonsense and she talks to Moana and she helps her figure out her own way. Moana, uh, Grandma Tala, Moana's grandma, isn't telling Moana, you need to do this and you need to do that. Grandma Tala is like, hey, look inside yourself. You know already. And that's what I love doing for my customers is helping them figure out the right questions to ask themselves so that they can create the brand and the business on their terms, right? That's what this is all about. And so there's so much insight into in our astrological natal charts that kind of like is part intuitive, part knowledge. And when you look at it as a whole, it just gives me so much information on how somebody can better align to their own strengths and talents and the things that they need to heal in themselves so that they stop over giving, like stop like, you know, like a lot of us here, and me included, I used to do this a lot and I still do sometimes, I caught myself the other day we're over delivering right somebody buys like you know 30 minutes of work from you and then you give them 60 right that's this idea of like over giving when we oh like when we over give or we try to make things so perfect there's no such thing as perfect so that like it's not perfect enough yet so you don't launch it or all of these things that we need to heal in ourselves these stories that we think that we're not worthy enough. I can see that in your astrological chart. And those things hold us back from being seen and being um, and sharing our gifts with the world. And if we're not seen and if we're not sharing our gifts with the world, well, guess what? We're not able to support our lifestyles. We're not able to support our dreams because we're selling ourselves short. So does this resonate with anybody here so oh there's more comments so 
so Renee said rising is in Sagittarius. So Renee, your customers are Gemini's. You're, you know, like I'm your ideal customer. <laughs> so the Gemini, you know, when you're a Sagittarius, you're the ultimate explorer. Your, your ideal customers, the Gemini, they have, they love a lot of different things. They love variation. They love, they, they're not one person, like a person that has like one hobby or one career. They have like four or five, right? The Gemini's are all, they love a lot of different things things um, and Karen says Scorpio rising um, so with a Scorpio rising business right like we talked about with the Taurus um, uh, your Taurus it is your ideal customer your ideal customer the Taurus they're looking for pleasure they're looking for um, they're looking for to have their their basic needs met right like we think about the Taurus archetype they're all about um, do I have enough food to eat? Do I have enough clothes to wear? Do I have people to love and take care of me? But in this way that's very tactile and very like, ooh, cozy and, and luxurious, right? Um, so Tomlin says, so I started out as a natural personal care product maker and seller, but my heart was not into it because to make money I had to sell the product high and I never felt comfortable doing that. So at the moment, I'm selling crystals and other modalities on my personal page. I do more self-help on a spiritual and conscious level. I just haven't figured out how to combine the two and how to get paying customers versus those who desire my counseling for free. Ah, oh, so many things wrapped up there. <laughs> yes. So first of all, we all need to do work that mean something to us right otherwise we can just go work at Starbucks I mean if you love serving other people and have this passion in coffee I think I used Starbucks as an example before I don't mean to diss on Starbucks but it seems to me that you really want to sell these natural personal care products and you know what's super interesting because um, you said you think your ascendant is Aries the way that you need to be showing up, no matter what you decide to sell, wherever your heart is, is you need to show up as the leader. You need to show up as a confident, energetic leader, right? And so how, when you show up as an energetic and confident leader, the people that don't want to pay for your services, you get to say, well, I'm sorry because I know that my services provide a lot of value and if this is not what you're looking to spend and invest in, then you can go someplace else. That's all it is. And it's about calling in the people that um, clearly understand what, you're, what, you're, what value you're offering because you've told them. <laughs> right? You've told them exactly what it's offering, right? So with Aries, your, um, your, uh, your uh, Libra people, they're looking for relationships. They're looking to be more popular. They're looking to be more beautiful. So if you're selling natural beauty products, the way that you need to sell it to the, your Libra archetype is like, this is going to make you beautiful. This is going to make you popular. This is going to make you feel romantic. Like that's like straight up. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I love that you love um, Moana. So Renee says, I so need your direction, but always it's finances that holds me up. And and Kat says, she says that she finds herself having a heart similar issue with, as Tomla. So yeah, pricing, right? Now, I do realize that my program seem, might seem expensive, but I want you to really think about um, what you've already spent and what you ha haven't yet made because you're not being clear, right? So I think I shared my story that I had invested in myself last year and I spent $20,000 on a mastermind. <laughs> Holy moly, um, that was a lot of money. And when I purchased that mastermind, in the beginning, I was like, what the F am I doing? That's just crazy talk. I don't have that kind of money. Like, I didn't really have that money. Like, I like $2,000 would be the money that I would put into my pocket of, as profit to, um, to support me and my family. But what I later realized is that when I invested in myself like that, 
I wasn't fucking around anymore. I wasn't making excuses. I was doing everything that my mastermind and my business coach told me to do. Right. And because of that, I grew my business exponentially. I brought a product out into the world, like a, a premium course, like a, a coaching program. I brought it out into the world. I got rid of clients that no longer fit. So the whatever I invested in my business, I've made way more than that. Right. So sometimes it takes a leap of faith about like, OK, um, I'm going to just go ahead and do it and trust in the universe that um, I'm going to make my money back. Like that's one. Now we can't just like operate in life with just like a, a trust and faith. Right. But we have to look at the opportunities lost and what we've already wasted. Right. So I don't know. Um, your program is okay on price. Your service and knowledge is well worth it. Thank you. Um, I believe in the price, you know, like I, that, that's one thing that I've really worked on is like, understanding my value and my purpose here and I'm still here to serve people that are not ready yet to like invest in themselves like that right like I get it um it took me a long time it took me 15 years to invest in myself like that now if I would have told my you know if I could have done it all over again knowing what I know now oh my gosh I would have invested in like the second year that I was in business because all that time that I lost, all that money that I could have been making, right? So when we don't invest in ourselves, we're looking at not only not only um, like what we've wasted in terms of like, well, I'm gonna hire this like cheap designer, I'm gonna like buy this cheap course that has no like accountability. And like we end up wasting that money. And then the opportunity lost because we've just now wasted all this time to um, in not really working with our true alignment. But I'm not here, sorry, I got off on a tangent. I'm not really here to talk about pricing today. I'm really here to just talk about astrology-based branding and why it's such an amazing tool for our businesses. So um, does anybody have more questions on um, astrology-based branding, on the astro brand framework of our defining our vision, finding our voice, and elevating our style. All of these things have to do with our businesses and how we can use our rising sign to create the archetypal guide that we're supposed to show up as and to attract and magnetize the opposite polarity of the seventh house cusp, the descendant. Those are the, that's the archetype um, of the customers that we need to attract now of course it's more than just like okay here's your rising sign and here's your your descendant sign if you have aspects or special planets on those um on those cusps on that heart on the horizon those are extra powerful planets for you that we have to kind of use to flavor um flavor your rising sign and flavor your descendant so for example i have saturn on my ascendant so i have saturn is the archetype and the energy of constriction of a little bit of self-doubt like well to me i interpret saturn in my placement as like this idea of self-doubt and this idea of like you know like kind of holding things back even though it's a little bit structured so i realized that in my gemini with the ascendant rising that not only do i just need to be a gemini i need to be a gemini that shares the struggles of self-doubt because i have self-doubt and it, it it, you know, I've, been, I've talked a lot about self-doubt in this group, and I talk about it because I want you to know that we are not alone with it. We all have it, and we have to work um, at becoming friends with our self-doubt and working and doing um, inspired action despite self-doubt. So anyway, um, so Tomlis says, I think my biggest issue is I'm a cancer, and I need to help and you're yeah cancers like libras they have this real need to overgive right to um give more than um than they than they should right and you can still be a cancer and you can still be very nurturing but remember cancer is not just about nurturing if we think about cancer and like the mothering archetype freaking cancer don't get it go don't get a mama bear mad because you know cancer mama bear is gonna come and she's gonna 
like slash the tires of anybody that gets in her way, right? So the idea with embracing um, your 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 nature to overgive is that we want to look at both like the both sides of the coin and say, okay, well, if I know that I have a tendency to overgive, what triggers and um, and fail safes can you put into place so that you can recognize when you're starting to overgive and say, whoops, I need to create my boundaries, I can't overgive. Because if we continue to overgive, then what's left for us? And now being selfish, I don't think there's such thing as selfish, we're being self-full. We're acknowledging what we need so that we can fully show up and be the person that we need to be for our customers. Because if we're not showing up like energize in 100 percent then then again we're not serving anybody and that's one of the things that i learned in burnout in the last seven weeks so i'm very very aware of those issues right now so oh my gosh thank you so much everybody for joining me on this friday afternoon i've been like talking my head off for 40 minutes here and if you have more questions of course just drop it off you know pop it in the comments i'll answer your questions i love 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 talking with you here today um you know over the next few weeks i'm going to be showing up a lot um i have a lot of things um up my sleeve with um, Crystallize and how it's going to come back. Um, I'm reformatting Crystallize from a 12 week program into a six month mastermind. The reason why I'm doing that from 12 weeks to six months is now that I've delivered Crystallize a total of three times, I see the kind of like the trajectory of how people, where people get stuck in the program and realize that we need just a little bit more time to accomplish everything in, um, in, for each module to really integrate because we don't want to rush through anything there's no such thing as like oh we're behind and I, I felt that the, my students going through crystallize were always feeling like they were behind so I just want to like extend the experience of us being together of creating community the community has been so awesome because there's been so many people in the um, in crystallize that started working with each other across the country it's been freaking amazing I loved Seeing, seeing the friendships and the sisterhood um, form in the community. Um, so yeah, so it's gonna be um, a six month mastermind. You're gonna get a lot more of me. We're gonna dive deep into astrology. We're gonna dabble into some human design. And if you don't know your human design, I suggest looking up your human design chart because that will give you a ton of insight on how your energetic body needs to move and make decisions in this world. Um, we're going to dabble in some ritual um, in how to harness the energy of the soil to really help us accomplish our purpose, right? Again, we're focusing on our vision and the purpose because when that's clear, then we can get the soil to help us. I know that sounds a little bit wacky, but it works. <laughs> So, all right. Thank you so much again, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.